Kevin Allen Jackson. On behalf of my co-hosts Isaac Simpson and Maria Perry, I'd like to welcome you to this episode of Short on Shorts. Our special guest reviewer this week is actress Naomi Grossman, best known as Pepper on American Horror Story. And the first film we reviewed was Hook Up, directed by Anonymous. Make sure to check it out before watching our review. The link is below. Enjoy the movie and our review. The first movie, <laughs> the first short that we're reviewing is Hook Up. Um, it's my pick. It's a film about two young gay men who meet on Grindr. Then they have a disagreement when, it, when one of them claims that they're straight. Um, why did I choose this movie? I chose this film because I really love realism. I found this to be a really brief slice of life that felt like it was actually happening, feeling like something that it, you would actually see. Um, it is uh, written and directed by Anonymous. It is starring Anonymous. The reason for that is that it was produced by Takeaway Scenes. Takeaway Scenes uh, is an anonymous uh, group where that re makes one-shot films focusing on realism. It's sort of in the vein of Dogma 95, so it's like no non-diegetic music, no artificial lighting, all one shot. It's a really cool project. I'm very into takeaway scenes. This is our second film we've reviewed from them, and I just find their movies to be such great shorts because they're these little short stories that really uh, kind of deal with contemporary life, and I found this one to be really good. Plus, I like stories about race and gender and sex because they're controversial and fun to talk about. So, <laughs> did you guys find this movie realistic? Realistic? Um, I can, I mean, I can, I can say, I can comment it on an on emotional level. It seemed emotionally realistic to me. I'm, I've never been in this situation. Um, I thought it was, it, I thought it said some really interesting things about the politics of, of gay culture that I hadn't seen before and I thought that was great. Um, anytime I see something that says, that talks about things or shines a light in a way I haven't seen before, I get excited. Um, I really, really wish the filmmakers for this were not anonymous because I'd love to see what else they've done. Um, and I enjoyed it. I, I mean, uh, it looks like it was shot on an iPhone with no lights, uh, but strangely, that was perfect for this movie, I think. Um, because there, there, you know, it was just dark and gritty, and about this hookup from two people who met on Grinder, you know. Um, so it seemed totally appropriate to me. I think it was realistic. I mean, I've heard about bro jobs. Um, <laughs> and bro, jo bro jobs. Bro jobs. Oh, bro jobs. Get it? Like blow jobs. But Got between bros, but it's, it's not so gay not because gay. it's bros. Because they're bros. Right. You know, they just take out care of their bros. That's yeah, awesome. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, realistic or not, I really enjoyed it on an emotional level as well. I felt like the dialogue was really organic and really felt like a slice of life. Um, I was bothered by the cinematography or lack thereof. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I couldn't help but notice the first thing the, um, the gay one does when he gets in is like adjust the light. <laughs> you know, I mean, he goes in to like check the mirror, which, yeah. you know, you're not going to do that. You're going to like engage with your, you know, partner. Right. I, I mean, I guess I could buy that though, because he, he went on and on at first about how hot this guy was, right? So, I mean, is it, un I mean, I guess you wouldn't do it in front of the person, but is it unrealistic that you would be self conscious all of a sudden? I mean, I, I mean, look. I, I mean, I can say that as a guy, every time you're around some woman who you feel is really, really attractive, there's a little part of you that gets uncomfortable and you get a little self-conscious. Like, how do All I All the look? more like, reason why I turn the light off. I guess that's true. I guess that's true. I, that's fair. But also, yeah. like, if that was the case, I probably would have been checking my reflection in my phone before the guy pulled up. Right. As opposed to pulling down the... Well, but, but he it didn't wasn't. See him until he well, no, he did. Well, no, he saw him on Grindr. Grindr has that's pictures. True. But that's then he was true. like, "You're really hot in person." I love that little piece of dialogue though, because that, you know, I feel like I have a good sense of when something is real right. in dialogue, and that just felt like that. That's happened sure. somewhere, you know. I'm like totally. that is a real thing that has right. happened, you know. And I, for some reason, it just brought me right. Right into the well, no, the, it's the it, relationship. That I mean, yes, I mean, I guess that's what I was, what I meant when I said I can relate to it on an emotional level. Um, mm -hmm. There was, it was definitely, it felt honest. None of it felt forced to me. I mean, I didn't, 
And anytime you watch something and you sort of forget that you're watching actors, but at the same time you're not like conscious of them being real people, that's sort of like that happy medium where you get lost in the story, right? Mm -hmm. Because you definitely, when you're watching real people on film, you kind of know it's real people and they're not real. Does that make sense? Um, you know, there's lots of movies that try to use real people and they're not actors and so they, they're kind of stiff and they, we actually, I, there, was a, there was a feature that, uh, I forget the name, but not too long ago that came out that we actually reviewed on the site, not for this show, but on the site, that used real people in it and you could sort of tell that they were real people, right? Then there's the other side of the spectrum when you can tell they're actors who are acting. When it's sort of in the middle and you can't tell, that's, I think, the happy medium when we sort of lose ourselves. And this had that for me. You know, I definitely, you the, know. the other thing with this is the last time that you picked one from this group of people, you asked if the anonymity, I can't say that word. Anonymity? Yeah, that one. See if, an enemy. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> if that had pulled us out of it at all. And I think it actually works better with this film than it did with the other one. The other one that we reviewed was about um, a guy popping the question, mm -hmm. and it was a woman who was disappointed that he hadn't asked her to marry him yet, and they were just getting back from a wedding, and it was very intimate. But because it was so intimate, and we didn't have the names of anybody, it felt weird, whereas this is something that is supposed to be semi-anonymous. You don't get the other person's name mm -hmm. fully. Yeah. So I felt like that didn't draw me out of it as much when you finish, and it's like, by Anonymous, starring Anonymous. You're like, oh, okay. No, that makes sense. It, because it was kind of an anonymous interaction, which is, that's a great point. Um, before we move on, I just want to ask, is there anything wrong with the frat boy in this case? The bro job guy? Because I thought, I thought it was actually really cool because it sort of flipped back and forth when he was arguing his case, right. saying, hey, don't judge me. You know, like you were the one that asked me all these questions. What's wrong with what I'm doing? I thought that that was inter I thought that that was a very compelling back and forth, mm -hmm. and I and what I liked about this film was that it didn't seem to end on a judgment of like this guy is a closeted you know asshole. Mm -hmm. Like it was more like, you know, is there anything wrong with that with being? I that mean, guy? The, to me, the only thing wrong with him is that he allowed the back of his head to be shot instead of his face. Like if he's so hot, let's see him. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe that's why they didn't feel like, you know, that it felt so real. They didn't feel like actory to us because we couldn't even see them. See their yeah. Face. No, but that, you know, the, the, interestingly, true. though, that adds to the anonymity of it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It does. Mm -hmm. and, and I mean, I don't know if they intended it that way, but I mean, if they didn't, it was a happy mistake for sure because it certainly fits in with the with the notion that this is supposed to be an anonymous uh, yeah, maybe interaction. Like giving them enough credit, you know maybe. what I mean? Maybe this was all like this super meta, you know, we'll do it from behind so they're anonymous and then we won't right. credit them so it's anonymous. It's all anonymous. <laughs> you know, we don't want to, you know, claim who we are, you yeah. know, that we do these things. Um, you know, but as a viewer, right. you know, if I'm giving my 10 minutes, then, you know, let me in a little. Uh, that's true. Okay. That's, that's a good, that's a good and, criticism. And, and I would say also to answer, my answer to your question, Isaac, is that, um, that's the thing that to me elevated this piece was the the space that it gave to the frat boy, right? That's the the point of view that is a little bit controversial and that is very real and doesn't get talked about a lot. And I loved the way you sort of. I mean, when I first saw this, when I when the movie started, I thought that this was a trap and he was going to beat the crap out of the gay kid. And then, so I was very surprised with the direction that it went in the first place. And, you know, but it did sort of, it was sort of setting you up to think that the frat guy was sort of the jerk, right? And then to have that flipped on its ear, and he makes a really good point. It's like, look, this is as far as I can go, right? You accept that or you don't, but don't judge me, right? I thought that was a great, I mean, that's a wonderful point. I actually really liked that aspect of it because I'm in a lot of very LGBT, A, and all the other alphabet soups that you've got What's going a? on. What's A? Allies and asexual, oh, depending on who you double, ask. Double Straight people say that it's allies, one. and everyone else says that it's asexuals, but I think we have like six 
right now uh, alphabet soups that are vying for the lead that are a little bit more inclusive. Can we get deer kin on there and all the different animal kin? I think there's actually one that's um, just underrepresented sexualities. Mm, um, like deer and I don't know that that's a sexuality. Rabbits. I think that's a, a gender identifier. No, it's not a gender identifier. There's, there's, that's out there, but I'm not sure what it falls under exactly. Regardless, <laughs> I'm in a lot of the spaces where I see people talking about this sort of thing all of the time. And quite often you'll see people talking about how bisexuals or people who identify as pansexuals or people who aren't sure yet what they identify as are very um, sort of kept out of queer spaces because there's such a, a urge to pigeonhole you as gay or straight or bi. And so not having a definite identifier like that guy does, where he's like, well, yeah, I hook up with guys, but that doesn't make me gay. Well, he's not wrong. But it also was cool that it kind of showed, even though he was set up, <laughs> it, it's, he's not wrong. I think he's in the closet. I think he's experimenting. I think he's in college. I think he's curious. I think he wants a bro job and who could blame him, well, you know? But I mean, that experimentation phase, what if it was something that wasn't just a phase? And right. if he's into chicks and dudes both, then maybe he's bi. Maybe he identifies as pan. Maybe you don't know and he doesn't know. So it's not really on him right now to be like, no, this is what I am. Yeah. And sticking a label on so somebody's I took sucks. Latin. I understand all these things. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, that's the argument that I wanted to bring up. You know, is it, is it fair to judge this guy if he doesn't, if if his identity is he wants to bang guys on the side and have a girlfriend and that's who he wants to be? Right. Is it really fair to to say that that's wrong? I, I mean, would say I, I, don't, I, don't I would know. say I don't judge him for his gender identity or his sexual preferences. What I do judge him for is his failure to disclose, and mm. the fact that because it is something where if you're going to hook up with somebody, you kind of want to know. Oh, they have a girlfriend, but it's an open relationship, or they have a girlfriend and I'm the person on a side. But I'm going to take the gay guy's side on this, like. Well, or actually, the, my bad, the straight, uh, straight guy. Um, you know, because remember the gay guy was whining, you never said you had a girlfriend. He's like, you never asked. Like, how many dates have I been on with a straight man who said, and I said, you have a girlfriend? He's like, you didn't ask. It's to like, be fair, he was on Grindr. I feel like if you are somebody in a relationship on a dating site or a dating app, you should say, I am in a relationship, but it's open. Like that should be something that is part of like when you're flipping through and going, hey, nice abs, that should also be there. A lot harder to get laid though when, when you have that on your, on your dating profile. Thanks for watching. If you want more information about how Short on Shorts works or how you can submit your film for consideration, or if you want to watch more episodes of Short on Shorts, Click on the link at the end of this video if you're watching on Facebook or in the description below if you're watching on YouTube. See you next time.